Convair B58 Hustler, beautiful and deadly, the B58 Hustler was a true icon of the jet age. With its polished aluminium skin, a futuristic design and the ability to carry multiple nuclear bombs into the Soviet Union at Mach 2, a massive technological undertaking, the B-58 was a marvel of engineering for its day. It first flew just a decade after the end of World War II. However for all of its impressive looks and specifications, the B-58 was marred with trouble. Virtually from the outset. A terrifyingly high crash rate, and the massive costs involved with operating a Mach to bomber would result in its demise. The pace of technological development in military aviation during World War II was hectic. Every major nation began that conflict with conventional piston engine fighters and bombers. By the end of the war, the first jet fighters and bombers were in service and even the first rocket fighters had seen operational use. But in the 10 years following the war, the pace of change became frenetic with East and West vying to produce aircraft that could fly faster and higher than ever before. The Convair B-58 Hustler had its origin in that period when anything seemed possible and each new generation of combat aircraft brought staggering advances in performance. In 1945, the frontline bomber of the U.S. 8th Air Force was the Boeing B-17G Flying Fortress, capable of a cruising speed of 180 miles per hour, while carrying a bomb load of 4,500 pounds of bombs. Just seven years later, in 1952, Convair unveiled a mock-up of a new Delta Wing jet bomber designed to cruise at supersonic speed while carrying nuclear weapons. Convair began a design study on the feasibility of a Delta Wing supersonic intercontinental bomber as early as October 1946 with the generalized bomber study JABO. Funded by the USAF, the Delta Wing configuration was felt to offer significant advantages at extreme speed and Convair was the only U.S. aircraft manufacturer who had produced a Delta Wing military aircraft, the XF-92 Interceptor. This never entered production but it did provide Convair with valuable data on the performance of Delta Wing aircraft. Convair studied, literally, thousands of possible configurations before announcing an extremely advanced concept in late 1950. This involved a parasite bomber that would be carried into the air beneath the B-36 bomber. The parasite aircraft was a small, two-seat bomber powered by two non-off-to-burning General Electric J5 3G EX-5 turbojet engines and was planned to be able to cruise at supersonic speed and reach an altitude of 50,000 feet. Rather than a bomb bay, the aircraft carried a jettisonable bomb pod under its fuselage. The U.S. Air Force liked the design of the supersonic bomber, but not the parasite concept. It was felt that this would be expensive to produce and maintain and might be vulnerable to enemy attack while the two aircraft were conjoined. In December 1951, the design was refined as a standalone Delta Wing bomber powered by two afterburner-equipped turbojet engines and providing space for a crew of three, a pilot a navigator, bombardier and a defense systems operator. The new design retained the jettisonable bomb pack carried under the fuselage and included the ability for in-flight refueling. 
to dissipate the heat generated by high-speed flight. The aircraft's skin was a novel sandwich of honeycombed fiberglass between outer aluminium and steel plates. Rather than being riveted, which was the standard approach at that time, these plates were glued together. Further modifications to the design were undertaken and, when a mock-up was revealed in late 1952, it featured for General Electric J79GE1 turbojets and pods under the wings which featured sweep back of 60. In December 1952, the new aircraft was given the designation B-58 and the name Hustler. Generally, new aircraft ordered by the U.S. Air Force are produced as prototypes and these are extensively tested to refine the design before the new aircraft goes into volume production. Such was the urgency with which this project was viewed that it was agreed to skip the prototype phase. The first 30 B-58 aircraft off the production line would be used for testing and to resolve any problems. This was a risky decision for an aircraft of such a radical design. By August 1954, the design had matured into its final configuration. The engines were mounted in for separate pods beneath the wings. The fuselage was redesigned according to the new modified transonic area rule for supersonic speeds leading to the coke bottle shape, and the bomb pack was shortened and modified to contain fuel, as well as the bomb load. The bomb pod could also be replaced with a photo reconnaissance pod including a Fairchild KA56 panoramic camera. Due to the B58S speed, the only defensive armament was a single General Electric M61 Vulcan 20mm rotary cannon in the tail, remotely controlled by the defensive systems officer. In December 1955, a contract was issued by the U.S. Air Force for an initial production run of 13 aircraft and 31 bomb photo reconnaissance pods. In service, it also quickly became apparent that the B-58's composite skin and small size made it very difficult to detect on the radar equipment available in the 1960s. On paper, the B-58 looked like the first of the next generation of combat aircraft. From the cockpit things looked less impressive. Its stall and spin characteristics were unforgiving and maintaining the correct angle of attack was critical at all stages of flight. 